Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to set up a sampler to work like battery does when it's in cycle random mode. And what that is, is it allows you to load several samples into a single slot triggered by one MIDI note and when that MIDI note arrives you choose a random sample of the batch to play and it sounds a little like this all right so there we're just triggering one of several 808 closed hi-hat samples on a new midi note at note 48 and you can use this technique to just kind of spruce up your drum beats a little bit so that they're not so static sounding um, just load a bunch of very similar sounds into the same MIDI slot and it gives you a much more realistic lifelike feel to your drum lines. So this just helps to overcome the monotony that can occur from triggering the same exact sample every single time um, and move away from the uh, very robotic drum beats that you can get in electronic music sometimes. And there's another similar technique to this called round robin sampling, where um, instead of just choosing the sample randomly, we cycle through them one by one. And that's just a little more complex to set up. So I'm going to save that for a later tutorial, but we'll be doing that as well later on this month. All right, so let's get started with a new ensemble. And I'm just going to load up a simple sampler object in the sampler menu. And we want to turn the sample map on in the upper right hand corner here, or alternatively you can press F9 to make that visible. And the easiest way to load up samples is to drag and drop from a file browser. So I'm just going to load up a bunch of 808 snares here. And the samples load in in a very convenient fashion, but it's not the way that we're going to be using them today, so we need to edit them. So first off, we have the root parameter, and this just tells us which MIDI note um, plays back the sample at its original pitch. And as the pitch deviates, the incoming pitch deviates away from the root, um, then the sample is going to be pitch shifted up or down accordingly. And next up we have the low and high columns, and these tell us which MIDI notes will trigger the sample. So you can see by default each sample gets one MIDI note, and um, the high, the low, and the root values are all loaded to the same MIDI value, so each sample can be played back by playing one MIDI note, and it'll play back at its original pitch. So we want to edit these samples so that they all play back on the same MIDI note. So what I'm going to do, um, just by editing the low parameter, the high and roots will change automatically as well. So I'm just going to edit each of these snares to play on uh, note 48, C2. And the last parameters here that affect how the sample plays back are the low velocity and high velocity values. So these tell us at which velocity ranges the MIDI note will be triggered. So by separating our snare sounds into different velocity ranges, um, we're effectively making it so that we can select which snare is playing um, by changing the velocity of the incoming MIDI note. So we want to set up the velocity ranges so that there's no overlap occurring. So I'm just going to make them all about the same size. Um, the first one's going to go from 0 to 14, second one from 15 to 29, etc. And the cool thing about setting it up like this is we can actually um, make it so that one sample is more likely to play than the others by giving it a larger range um, in velocity. So for example, our last sample at the bottom there um, has a velocity range from 105 to 127, which means it's slightly more likely to play than the other ones because its velocity range is, you know, like 22 or something instead of 15. All right, so we have some samples loaded. Now let's just set up our sampler. 
Um, we want to hit the pitch input with a note pitch module, pretty basic. Um, and I'm going to use a gate to control the amplitude. Um, something I like to do when controlling the amplitude with a gate is to only send the gate values that are greater than zero to the A input. Um, we can use a separator to achieve this. Um, simply run the gate into a separator and use the high output. And the reason for using the separator here is that this way uh, an incoming gate will trigger the full drum sound to play. So if you have like a sound with a lot of decay, like a, a crash cymbal or something, um, the whole sound will play even if you release the uh, MIDI note early. So that's optional. You don't have to uh, use that if you don't want to, but I like to. So the last thing to do is to hit the trigger input with a random value. And this is fairly simple. Just use a randomizer module from the event processing section. Um, and what the randomizer module does is it takes an event input and adds a random value um, within the range given by the range input. So if we set the range to 0 0.5 and send an input of 0 0.5, um, we're going to add or subtract a value from 0 to 0 0.5 to the input, and we'll end up with a value that ranges from 0 to 1. And we can simply run that directly into the trigger input of the sampler, which is the input which controls um, at which sample to select using the high and low velocity columns in the sampler menu. All right, well, those snares don't all fit together as well as I would have hoped, but you get the general idea. Next time I'll show you how we can use a similar technique um, called round robin for triggering our samples. Until then, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please check out our website and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll be back next week with a new Reactor tutorial.